Hey guys, Andrew the Realtor here with the October 2021 market update. We'll try to go through this fairly fast because, uh, well, frankly, there's not too much to say because things are kind of moving as, as expected. Uh, if you've seen any of my news newsletters of the past, uh, probably past, well, honestly, this whole year, uh, pretty dead on in terms of numbers and everything else. And one thing I'm going to show you guys today specifically, last month I showed you guys, uh, because of the election and everything, I showed you just how little... Uh, of some of the some of the ideas that some of the politicians had in terms of housing affordability, how little those ideas would actually do and make any effect whatsoever. You'll notice that foreign tax is not coming up too often these days at, now that the election is gone. And uh, I would highly recommend if you didn't take a look at my uh, take a look at my uh, my newsletter market update specifically my video last month because I addressed something that's um, it, it it was very eye opening when I first learned it a few years ago in terms of how much the media and online and, and, and social media um, move people's attentions to, to places where really it need not be. And so it gets people to panic in the wrong direction, think about the wrong solutions and those kinds of things. Have a look at my last video. I'll have that in there. So for now, October 2021, I'll give you a quick number about the market and something to kind of give you an idea of what this month, October, excuse, or more importantly, September stats. So September last month, what that looks like versus September's of 2018 and 2019 because everyone keeps talking about 2020 so have a look let's do this real quick i'm gonna minimize myself here and so i'll move myself this is always the hardest part there we go okay so one of the issues that comes up regularly and i've see, still see it on, on the, some of the articles and such is how much the market is plunging so let's look at september 2021 right, right now obviously last month so homes sold uh obviously lower than month uh, september of 2020 and that's something people are saying i actually saw the plunging word it was in one or two of the articles i'm not gonna include them in the newsletter uh but i did see that you know sales are lower those kinds of things well average price continues to be up obviously um active listings are way lower i did this last time so i didn't even circle them this time active listings here are just over nine thousand, or were just over nine thousand, whereas they were literally double that in september of 2020 the same with new listings we're way lower than they were they were last time the, the, the problem is only so many people move in a population and because our first half was so busy selling what seventy thousand, uh give or take seventy thousand properties um, how many people can kind of put their house on the market? Obviously, still quite a few because it is the GTA, but uh, uh, the active listings, the new listings are way down. And so look at the detached price, especially detached, especially has gone just insane, to be honest with you. And I'll show you some actually some characteristics on the next slide as to what specifically people are looking for. We're looking for a home uh, and quite often it is detached. Um, so average price definitely going up. It's going to slow down at some point in time. You'll notice the average price here went up 18.3%, which is less than the 20 something something. So it's, 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 I don't want to say 18.3 is lower, but it's certainly lower than some of the other months that it's been. But let's take a look. Home sold. Here it is. Here's the plunging number. All the plunging, always the plunging. Uh, sounds like a plumber, uh, but that's 2021. Let's look at 2018. How many sold? How many? This is pre COVID. Normal year, 2018, very normal year after a crazy 2017. In 2019, certainly another normal year, you know, and a fairly busy year at that, 2019. Now, 2018, homes sold in September, 6,414, 9,000 last month. That's a heck of a difference. It doesn't sound like much of a plunge. In fact, if anything, it's probably more, more than it was. Uh, that's obviously quite a bit more. It was actually a pretty busy month, just not compared to 2020. Now, let's look at 2019, 7825. So almost 8,000 uh, homes sold in, in September of 2019. Pretty solid month. Very busy for September. But look at our September. Oh, wow. Way higher than that. Interesting. Again, people try to emphasize in articles, news, uh, stories, and those kinds of things. Look at the numbers compared to what it is. We're actually still quite busy. So that's where we're at. Demand has been normal. Normal sales. Sales have gone down. Sales have gone down. So demand is fairly normal, give or take. For this time of the year and has been for three to four months inventory that has been the issue it continues to be the issue next slide these are the common traits a uh, nice little stat that i pulled from uh, i forget which source but um these are the these are the, what people are searching for so if you're buying you probably this one might look familiar for you uh but if you're selling these are the this is the, the standard this is the most faint most uh popular um characteristics so you're looking at three washroom 3.2 bedroom so three or four bedroom three bathroom Maybe something in the basement, one and a half to two car garage, 1.3, usually two car garage, four parking spaces, very typical home. That is what people are looking for. Three to four bedroom, three bathroom, 
those are the characteristics. Most homes, especially detached homes, do fit those characteristics. And heavens, that's why they're so popular. And you saw the increase from last month. So uh, a little ditty from uh, quite a little while back. Uh, you might remember I was putting this putting this up in uh, in August and between July and October. It did. It did happen. This actually did happen. Contrary to what a lot of the stuff that even some of my own clients were hearing from other agents or other people, this has been the case. It's going to continue. You'll notice interest rates are still extremely, extremely low. So next thing. I'll finish with this. I'm trying to make this a little bit faster because I know not all of you guys have a chance to put in you know, 10, 12 minutes into a video. We're busy. I totally get it. However, here's a here's a question. Let me minimize myself even further. Let me get myself out of the way. Well, I can't. Eh, it doesn't matter. So I always promise a Q&A at, at the end of the video. And this one specifically actually is very important. And I'll mention something similar in December because this same question is, is going to come up, except it won't be fall. It'll be holidays. Should I buy or sell over the holidays? So in this case, is the fall a good time to buy or sell? It, the first question is always yes, because it's the GTA, and that is my usual answer. Here are some important points. Now, it is the GTA, so the market is still quite active. That is a good reason. If you're looking to buy or sell, don't change too much of your life around if you need to do it at this time, because it is quite active. You saw the sales. Very busy September. Not as busy as last year, which was crazy, but compared to a fairly normal September, quite busy. You saw where the prices are at. Next thing, buyers and sellers at this time become more and more serious. Why? Because the weather is getting... You wouldn't know it with the 20 degrees, 23 degrees in the past few days. However, uh, the weather is getting colder. The holidays, holidays are approaching. School's going to be over for kids, uh, you know, in a couple of months. Those kinds of things people are looking at. So people that are doing this, sellers and buyers, they're serious. They don't want to waste time. They want to, quite often, not always, close before the holidays. Um, so less tire kickers, if you will. Uh, for those that are putting the house on the market, a couple of my clients noticed the showings weren't, there weren't as often showings, but the showings that did come were serious people. Got a lot of questions about properties, got a lot of, uh, you know, questions about the neighborhood and those kinds of things. Those are people who are clearly interested, not just kicking around. So that's something very important, but serious buyers and sellers. If you're a buyer, you have a higher, you have a serious seller that you'll probably be working with. If you're a seller, you can have serious buyers looking at your, at your home. The lower overall sales volume, because it is September, uh, excuse me, now it's, I guess we're into October because it is October. Um, lower sales volume does mean that everyone involved does move a little bit quicker. Here's what I mean. Because of the had a high volume of sales, especially in the first half of the year, I remember hearing from banks that some folks at TD, uh, some folks at RBC and other lenders, they were having a hard time keeping up with the files. The underwriters were overwhelmed. And frankly, they really should have either hired more people or worked a little harder or maybe a little bit longer. I don't know. The point being, those things, inspectors were busy. A lot of people were busy. But now, things are a little bit slower down. What you can expect is lawyers are, are on point. The lenders are going to be on point. The underwriters are not going to be overwhelmed. The mortgage person is going to be a little more available. Better. They better be. So that's something to keep in mind. It's a very real thing when you're doing, when you're doing transactions. You want things to flow smoother, especially on the financing side. And, of course, here the word, the word on, on my head here is, again, closing. Closing before the holidays becomes an important aspect of negotiations. So now there is a life aspect to things. So if your offer comes in at a price maybe slightly less than the other person, but your closing is exactly what these people want, your, your offer is exactly what these people are, it's in line with what these people, what the sellers are expecting to do. You know what? They might even take your offer. You know why? Because of the incredible hassle of, for those people specifically of moving during the holidays because they don't want to. And but on, the opposite, on the flip side of that, I'm already seeing it. Some people want to close. After the holidays in January, and I know some even some clients I'm we're currently working with that are actually more than happy to close in January. Those people can have a bit of an advantage because they're going to align their offer with what the seller is looking for, and vice versa. So the point being, there are new aspects, different aspects of negotiations that can give the buyer certainly, sometimes the seller, a bit of an advantage um, in the negotiations. You know, depending on the circumstance. So the fall, the, the fall market, definitely a good one to get into. It's still quite active. Um, we've got a good two months until uh, till the holidays begin. And uh, in December, I'll be telling you about the holidays again and some of the great success I've had over the holidays with clients due to bad weather, difficulty of showing, and those kinds of things on the buy side. And for sellers, very serious people coming by ready to buy before the next year hits. Anyway, so let's, let's talk then. Guys, enjoy the rest of your October. Be safe. Enjoy the next few days of weather. Lord knows it'll probably be snowing within a little while. And uh, I'll see you guys next month. Take care.